So, this is my uh, new latest combining block. Um, took me two days to make that. Um, that was the first attempt. That slot should have been at 90 degrees, so didn't take me long to mess up that first one. Anyway, patience and perseverance, we've got another one made. Um, so it's made of brass. A um, few reasons for that. Firstly, it's easier to machine. Um, when you're trying to drill holes using what, things like that, um, it's quite easy for that drill bit to wander off center. And when you're trying to get six holes all exit in the same point, it can be difficult. So with aluminium, the swarf comes off as a kind of a, a curly bead and it um, is quite easy to block the flutes if you don't keep relieving the drill every two or three mil. Um, whereas brass, the swarf breaks up into tiny little chips, so it doesn't block the flutes, um, and the drill runs more true and ends up where it should do. So that's the first reason for making out of brass. The second reason is that it's um, not as good a thermal conductor as aluminium. So with the aluminium version of this, I got up to about um, 275 degrees on the nozzle, um, and then this was 195. So if I wanted to go much more than about 275 on the nozzle, then I'd need to start blowing air over this to cool it down. So I'm hoping that um, making out of brass, um, I could run the nozzle at a higher temperature without this getting as hot and so uh, negate the need to have a second fan if I can because at the moment it's dead quiet because it's liquid cooled so yeah I, I just didn't really want the added complexity of a fan um, if I didn't need to and that's also the reason why I've um, incorporated these fins so basically it increases the surface area um, so more of the um, conductive heat can find its way, can dissipate. Um, yeah, in an ideal world those fins would be vertical and then you'd get a sort of a convection current going on. Um, but it is what it is. Um, but if I do need to use a fan, um, then the fins also, if, if the air is being blown in from that angle, those fins will prevent the air from being deflected down onto the hot end. That's a theory, anyway. So I just wanted to explain why it is what it is. Um, so heat breaks go there. These are the filament indents, and these heat breaks are PTFE lined, but they seal against that top face like that. So the way that works is that that plate goes on there and gets bolted on, and then the heat breaks screw into that plate like so. And then um, in earlier versions of these, this plate is distorted, or that plate is distorted when they've been made out of aluminium. Um, so I've ended up using lots of bolts. So there's actually 12 holes uh, to hold it, just to stop it distorting. Um, so there's four there, four down each edge, and then four down the middle. The two inner ones are threaded. The um, outer ones aren't threaded because when I get six heat brakes screwed in this block, there isn't much room around the edge for a bolt head. So I use countersunk bolts, which will sit flush in the plate like so. But what I have found in the past is that when I want to take this apart trying to get those out either the screw rounds off or the hex key rounds off so then I'm left with a bolt that I can't get out and you end up having to drill the head off the bolt and try not to damage this plate at the same time that's the reason why those holes are uh, just clearance holes so I can put the bolt through and I can put a nut on the other side and then if I want to take it apart I can take the nut off and I can always push the bolt back out the other way 
um, I don't have to drill the head off or anything like that and I can get really tight but of necessity the um, two holes in the middle um, have to be threaded because there's nowhere to put a bolt on the outside um, and then the other six holes are the filament inlets um, so those two in the centre are at 10 degrees angle to the vertical so they come out the same point um, and then these other four in the corners are also 10 degrees that way but 20 degrees that way so all six filaments go in like that and all end up at the same point on the outlet so that's the reason for that and then um, that's the uh, that's the outlet end so the nozzle block with the nozzle block with the main heater and then the nozzle goes on underneath there with the heat brake the, the secondary heat brake goes in between these two nearly forgot the third reason for using brass is that it is um, inherently uh, lower coefficient of friction than aluminium so it's inherently slipperier which should help the filament go through but then the other thing I've also done is those holes rather than just being um, drilled which they were in the aluminium one um, I've also now reamed them thanks Bill for the reamer so they worked to treat um, so yeah one of the guys that watches this channel Bill Todd um, sent me some reamers which is handy um, so that saved me about 30 quid so thanks again Bill so I can't really show it on um, on camera here you're not going to be able to see through but those um, there's a really nice smooth finish on those holes now so they should help the filament to slide uh, better as well then that's the uh, that's the hole for the heater which is also reamed to 6mm so it's a nice snug slidey fit and, I'll, and I generally smear them with boron nitride paste to, to give a good thermal contact and then the other hole there is for the um, is 3mm for the thermistor cartridge and then to retain them um, these smaller holes um, are threaded M3 so slide the cartridge in and then put um, a little button headed M3 bolt in each side and that stops the cartridge from falling out either way. So that's about it, so I'm looking forward to testing that. Um, the idea is to try and make it so that I can run it even cooler um, and still extrude reliably. Um, I don't know whether that's going to be possible or not but um, that's the plan. I'm also going to use um, an 80 watt heater on this um, sounds bizarre I've done all this work to stop it getting too hot but then I need to heat it um, but um, because it's brass it takes longer to heat up um, so when I first want to start a print um, if that's got to run at sort of whatever it is 170 or something um, I don't want to wait forever to for it to get up to 170 so I need to heat it. Once this has reached its temperature and the hot end down is hot then that secondary heater won't do much it's just the initial getting it up to temperature so I don't have to wait 20 minutes before I can use the thing. So that's that and then the other thing I've got which I want to try is um, this stuff. Dry Molly. It is resin bonded molybdenum disulfide spray and it says a high performance resin bonded dry film lubricant based on molybdenum disulfide. So it's a low friction coating, um, not quite as good as PTFE but it's, it's that kind of order um, and it's good for 450 degrees C. So I'm debating about spraying the inside of those holes with that. Might just help the filament um, slide a bit easier. Um, but then the other possibility is maybe spraying nozzles with it. Um, it might help um, prevent filament from sticking to the outside of a nozzle. Uh, as I say, it's good for 450 degrees C. So um, I'll give it a try and see what happens. 
So that's it really, I just wanted to give a quick update on this, uh, this new combining block that I've made, which I've now got to go and fit. Um, and grateful thanks to those who have donated um, either cash or materials or time or whatever to support me. It's always much appreciated and um, there's a link to my Patreon and PayPal accounts down in the description. Um, if you wanted to to help any anything I get goes towards filament and tooling and materials and stuff so uh, it's all very much appreciated uh, thank you until next time Malibdinum Malibdinum never know when to stop moving my lips when I say a word like that Malibdinum <laughs>